Welcome to the Fast Cars, Fast Girls podcast with Abby and Molly. Here with us this week, we've got Brian Runnels. Um, you may know him as the Indy 500 Pirate. Yeah, on Twitter, yes. You might also know him by his infamous shirts that say, Fuck you, we're from Indianapolis. <laughs> yep. Which we love. Which oh, yeah. we love. And it turns out before we met Brian, we had actually sneakily taken pictures of him without his knowledge or consent really? for the last oh. couple of years when we're at the track and have seen him. We've seen your shirts and have taken okay. pictures. And then we met you this year, you were wearing that shirt. And right. Yeah, it just cracked us up. I'm like, We we know who this guy is. Right. Finally. Yeah, we, that's- We've seen this guy. That's my symbol when we go to Daytona for the 24-hour race. Well, we're very excited. We just got our tickets and our hats in the mail, today. Good deal. Yeah. All right, so what did you get? Just two-day passes then? No, we did the four-day. You got four-day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you got hats with it? Yeah, they had a special where it was only like $4 more. Oh, it was yeah, a hundred. hell out Yeah, 100 here. bucks for the um, for the four-day pass. It was 104 to get the four-day pass yeah. and an event mm-hmm. hat. Wow. <laughs> I wish I didn't know that. I mean, we, we, we have to buy a package. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To get everything. And you have to buy at least two admission tickets. But the camping pass is nothing. It's like 40 bucks. I know. Yeah. That's what we... Yeah. But see, you can't get... Did you get a camping pass? Yes, we grabbed a camping pass. We did okay. just in case. Because we know you and guys said you had room, but we figured just in right. case. So, yeah. Or you can't... Did you get a pass inside? No. no. Those okay. are sold out. Yeah. So they'll yeah. sell out immediately. Cause yeah. They're, they're, and I don't know how Doug even got us in on that. Because he went Magic. one year and... He's very personal. He, he bought a pass for the outside campground. Mm-hmm. And then him and Gabe went inside and started walking around and found a pass to get inside. Mm. And they came inside and, well, lo and behold, next year they asked Doug, they sent him a letter and said, do you want to renew? He's like, sure. And when he renewed, it was an inside <laughs> camp pass. Hey, okay. Let it happen. And <laughs> so maybe that will happen for you two next year. That'd be awesome. That'd I mean, be you're going to enjoy just it. It, oh, it is a wait. freaking blast. Now, so, all right. Well, Brian, tell us. Um, so you've been working at the uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway for how many years? This makes 36 this year. 36 oh years. So yeah. how'd you get started? Uh, I had a bunch of friends that worked there. And I, I grew up in Greencastle, which is just west of yeah. Indianapolis, mm-hmm. the Speedway area. Home and, of uh, DePaul University. There you go. Exactly. Right. We must have had this conversation before, I think. No, I um, I have a friend who's from De, uh, from Greencastle. Okay. All yeah. right. But uh, a few of my friends worked at the Speedway. Okay. And we would always have a party on Memorial Day weekend every year on the night before the 500. Saturday and night party? Was, uh, Few of us were underage. It's, it happens. It happens. It yeah. happens. And, and then it's happened on this always at like midnight, a group of these guys would say, "Man, we got to go." Like, where are you going? Well, we work at the Speedway. We got to go to work. And, and yeah. at that time, you had to. I mean, 16th Street would back up. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And we, there used to be a parking lot at the end of um, Georgetown. No, uh, it. It was the Goodyear facility for years. That's right now. It's the Lockett facility for IPD. That's the barns that are over there at the end of uh, oh crap, right there by the railroad viaduct. Where do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, like 30th. And, uh, no, 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 no. This is on 16th Street by the mm. railroad viaduct. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But we to get in that parking lot, you had to be there super early because you had to cross. Oh yeah. 16th Street. I mean, they, they give you a, a, a sticker to go in, and you could park in the Coke lot at that time. They mm-hmm. let you park in the Coke lot. Because the North 40 was all just parking for empl- not employees at that time. Yeah, right. It was all customer parking. But anyway, these guys would all leave early, and I'm like, man, I want to work at the track. I'm like, well, at that time, you had to be 21. Mm. And I was 21, but it took me two-plus years, honestly, to get hired. Wow. So... Here, you know, now I'm an employee, 1982, the first race. Freaking awesome race. Yeah. I mean, that was one for, until the Al Lunser Jr. race mm-hmm. in 92. Yeah, that was awesome, right? Yeah. I mean, Gordon Johncock won with Rick Mears almost passing him mm-hmm. at the start line. And I'm right down there by the start-finish line at the end of the race. And it's like... This is on my bucket list. I will never give up this job. Yeah. <laughs> and now fast forward, and it's 2017, and I still work there. And, and you haven't given so, up this job. Oh no, I'm not. I mean, I thought about <laughs> it after years, and I'm like, nah, I can't. I can't do it. This is yeah. too much fun. Sorry about that. No, it's oh, all right. Fine. Stupid phone. You're fine. No worries. So that's that's the, the basic story of it, and I'm in the one of the prime positions. 
in uh, Grandstand E. Oh, okay. okay. Box nice. 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. And uh, I think there's like a, a survey out there, and everybody always says, like, box 11, seat number such and such <laughs> is the prime spot that everybody really likes. And mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now, it, it is a good viewing area. That's that's where we sit for quals. Yeah. It is a view, good viewing area. So, so yeah, so you've been, so you're a yellow shirt. <clears throat> yeah. And you have been a yellow shirt for a long, long time. Wow. Yep. All these badges, I just brought them in with me just to yeah. show you. I mean, got this one picture, they don't like to update them or anything like that. <laughs> I even got me a little safety patrol. Oh, uh, the Lego oh, man. Lego yeah, they did the, the Lego. The Lego yeah. Thing, oh, that's so. amazing. That was super cool. Um, one of my nephews was like at prime Lego age. Um, when the famous Lego builder came through and they had the whole display over um, in the museum. Mm-hmm. And then after that, they took it to the Children's Museum. Yeah. Okay. And so I took him there for his birthday that year. <coughs> and, um, and they and he had made a Lego model of the IMS. Oh, wow. Right. And and it right. was so cool. Oh, right. my gosh. And, and, yeah, we went there. And he was just as into it as I was, which, you know, I was very happy about because... Half the time when I've taken my nieces and nephews to movies or children's museum or whatever, it's because secretly it's something that I want to see or do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now you've got an excuse. So I'm always excited yeah. when, they, when they're as excited as I am because right. I was like, okay, good, because I was using you as a front to do yeah, this. There you go. So, right. There, I understand. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, that was super cool. Um, yeah, that year. Yeah, they came out last awesome. year for the all the drivers. Yeah. Several of the drivers. Yep. And then they came up with the safety patrol. Yeah, like, with the yellow shirt. Oh, man, I got to get one. You have to. With that. You have to. You <laughs> have to. A hundred percent. Right. So when you joined, did you have to go through any training? Or? No, it was just <laughs> basically you just showed up. Yeah. And at that time, there was an old wooden structure mm-hmm. up between three and four. And mm-hmm. they called it the North Cottage. You just showed up um, and picked up. You already had your stuff because you were supposed to come like April 30th or something like that. Okay. You could come pick up your hat and shirt. Okay. And... You furnish your own pants, shoes, blah, 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 stuff yeah. like that. Um, you just show up, pick up your stuff, and then you just show up on race day. And we didn't have any badges or anything <laughs> at that time. You just showed up, and then they sent you. Okay. With And the, the, the deal was is to tell them on your application that you worked with people in this area, and yes. you would get to work with them. Ah. And so all my buddies worked in East End. So consequently... They sent me to East Stand, too. Okay. Yes. And I've told all my friends that I've gotten hired there. I've probably gotten 20 people over the years hired there. Just make sure you put on your application that you know me. Yeah. And you put, and you work, I work in East Stand, and you would like to work in East Stand. And see, I just told Molly last week, so my mom's best friend, Zora, her sister, Mary Damjanovic, was a yellow shirt for years and years and years as well. Probably, let's see probably joined about the same time that you did. Yeah. Um, And she worked in the garages. And so for years, I was really excited and had looked into that. And she said the same thing. You know, she said, when you apply, put my name down and then you'll end up in the garages, this and this and this. And, but I told my, I never did it because I, I I could never, I I could never sacrifice. I know. Going, not, not watching the race. race. I know. Yeah. I had several opportunities. I met some guys in the coke lot. Yeah, that worked at the speed worked there too. We have a, a at that time at the Coke lot. We used to have an employee campground in the Coke lot, mm-hmm. and then they bought the Georgetown Village apartments. Oh yeah, and then knocked those down and made it a parking parking lot and <laughs> a campground for the employees again. Sure. Well, we met these guys that worked in the garages, and one of them at that time worked ran the pit lane. Oh yeah, uh, Jack a Root. Wow. Well, he was the race Yeah, guy. yeah. And those guys were like, man, if you ever want to come to the garage area or work the pit lane or I, I can always use a helper with Jack Root. And I was like, ooh, that, that sounds so pro- – to be right there in the heat of the battle, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. There, but then you miss – So much so else. Much. You miss yeah. watching it. Yeah. It's- because I, I, I'm basically getting paid. <laughs> to sit there and watch the race? St- I'm just standing there and watch the race. Yeah, <clears throat> stand there. Right. I mean – my vantage point, I don't even know what the tickets are anymore because we don't tear them off. We, at one time, we used to tear off yeah. the stuff. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I don't even know what it is anymore. The price, because I don't even look at them anymore. 
No. No. I don't even hold them because they used to hand them to you and you had to yeah, tear, them tear them off. Yeah, you tear them off. Well, and it was a whole thing because there were two tear offs. There was a one for regular, then there was a second if there was a rain, rain delay. It was a rain check. Yep. And yep. then the year that they ended up running it on Tuesday, I mean, they'd already oh, torn off both of the perforated right. edges. And, well, we didn't but by the time Tuesday, it was like you could hold up one ticket for no, like 40 you have, people. You didn't even have to. Yeah, yeah, it was you didn't just have to have a anybody, ticket. Yeah, anybody <laughs> in the town of Smoothie just come because everybody from out of town is left. I've stories of that freaking day. Well, that was my first Indy 500. And I can't. What year was that again? Uh, Ninety-seven. Oh, you're sure? Yeah, Is that what it was. It was either ninety-six okay. or ninety-seven because okay. I was. It was like fifth or sixth grade. Sounds about right. I think it was ninety-seven because I think it was the end of my sixth was grade. Was it your Bobby Rahal one? Wasn't it? Oh, I don't. All right, let me look it up. Okay, but I remember that because it rained mm-hmm. on race day and it rained on Monday. Okay, so here we're going to have it on Tuesday. And they tried. I mean, they ran laps on Sunday and Monday. Right, and, and the, so on Tuesday, they were like, anybody show up. <laughs> and we got to park underneath the grandstand. Oh, wow. <clears throat> because they, we needed help so bad. And we showed up. And you didn't have, there was nobody at the gates. There was nobody at the main gate at 16th and Georgetown. Oh, that's funny. Because we didn't have enough employees. That's funny. Yeah. And Oh, shit, no. It was uh, Ari Leindyke who won that year. Okay. Yeah. Right. But it was just, it was a madhouse in East Stand because everybody Once that in never there. got to set in East Stand <laughs> wanted to set in East Stand. Oh, no. And you got 22 seats in a row. Yeah. Okay. You got 1 through 11 and 12 through 22 on the next row for the same letter. A has this, but we mm-hmm. don't have A and B rows anymore. Yeah. We, uh, is it start at C? Maybe it's D. A, B, and C... I think are gone because yeah. they, we call that the dead man zone now. <laughs> After the seventy three five hundred, they took out all of those seats. <laughs> but um, I mean, it was like thirty people trying to get in twenty two seats. Oh wow! And it was like we—I mean, people were coming up with the ticket, and our instructions was: if anybody has the ticket, they get the seat. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you have to ask the other people to leave. Yeah. Well, how do you ask him to leave? I mean, how do you enforce this? <laughs> well, right. I mean, it's that, like, that's what I say to Molly every time she says. Well, we're not allowed to do this. I said, how are they going to enforce it? Because right. I'm, I'm right. very pro-breaking rules. So. Oh, that's the way to do it. Yeah. I'm unless, like, unless somebody tells you not to, exactly. then it's you do it. Easy to ask forgiveness. There you go. You know, they're like, how, well, we can't do this. How are you going to enforce that? Though? Right. How are oh, you wow. going to enforce it? So, oh, right. Yeah. So, yeah, right. asking people to get up out of their seats. Right. We were. I, I just stood and looked at the crowd, and I, I mean, I'm just like this with my hands out. Like, and I'm like, <laughs> come on, people. Look at all these empty seats and... B stand and right. Well, and I will Southwest say, Vista and they, I will say, our seats were in Southwest Vista that year, and we went back to our section. In fact, we went back to our seats on Monday. On Tuesday, mm-hmm. we moved up a little higher because it was pretty cleared out. But I mean, right. South, Southwest Vista is right, right next to right. Sandy. I mean, they were still great seats. Yeah, but it's not the vantage point that you get. It's in not East the stand. same. Yeah, no, that, which is why we sit knee for quarrels and not Southwest is Vista. It's totally different. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean that that is. That is, those are the best seats in right. the house, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, they're they're very good. The first ten plus years, I worked. Um, see, right now I'm in seven, eight, nine, ten mm-hmm. box box seven, eight, nine, ten, and uh, the stairs go up and they split. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. The first like ten plus years, I worked in twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and <clears throat> you'd lose a little bit of the pit lane, mm-hmm. just one box over. Mm-hmm. But I did develop a relationship with this family that I still go over and see on race morning. Well, yeah. And yeah. they it's hugs all around. And and I've seen this one girl, and it was like a couple years ago. I'm like, <coughs> you're drinking. And I was no nurse since like 82, yeah. 83. <laughs> and she's like, well, I'm 21 now. And I'm like, okay, smoke. Obviously, she's older than that. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I've seen these families come in, and at that time, it was... The tickets were willed, basically, mm-hmm. to people. And oh, to yeah. get that seat, somebody had to die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's still almost that way. It's, it's, it's a it tough has, seat. They have, um, they have changed the rules that you can only will your tickets once. Okay. So you can will them to a, and it has to be a fairly direct relative. So a sibling, a child, or a grandchild. Okay. Um, or I mean, you can go the other way, but I don't know why you would. Mm-hmm. And so I've said for years, you know, that when, because the tickets are in my mom's name, which I told her, I told her when we started buying tickets that we should put them in my name just so that we wouldn't have to mess around with the whole willing right. situation. Right. But 
Nobody listens to a twelve year old. I also said we should. I, I also said we should have made the kitchen twice as big. But yeah, so well, but there. I mean, you could you could have done this and said, "Hey, your address is at my house." So you, the, even though she might have died, the tickets still come in her name. You can still keep them. Well, I, what I said to her was, when she dies, you know, she because she said, "Well, should I just you know should I transfer them to you now?" And my sister and I both said, "No, you transfer them to one of our children." Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's the long, that's the the, the greatest right. longevity of the ticket life. Right. So and they're not going to get rid of them. They're going to no. because they know that you're going to go. Hell no. So, right. Hell no. And so right. So yeah. So now my sister's pregnant. So she's the first uh, like blood grandchild of, of my mom's kids. Okay. So so yeah. So we're like, all right, okay. baby hearse. That's who. That's Let's who these tickets are going to go to. Because cool. I was like, well, I was like, no, no, no. Don't will them to me at this point. I was like, the time for that has come and gone. Let's will <laughs> right. Let's will them to a child. <laughs> right. So that we can right. get the the most out of this. Right. But, uh, but, yeah, no, those tickets, and I hear there's, like, a 10-year waiting list. I, I couldn't tell you. I just know that I've seen, the, I, for, for years upon years upon years upon years, it was the same people every year. Mm-hmm. And I, it still is mm-hmm. where I'm at now. I mean, because I've been there over 20 years now yeah. where I'm at. And, I mean, but the whole time, I've worked in East End. And, and it was, like I said, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 11, 12, 13, 14 for 10, 15 years, and then mm-hmm. moved over one box. And I was like, oh, thank you. This is so much better. It's, it's <laughs> amazing. It's so much it's better so because now I can see all the way down the pit lane. And mm-hmm. the other one, you can see just the end of the pit Just lane. the end of it and not, yeah. And at that time frame, when I first started, you weren't supposed to watch the race. And you're still not supposed to. Sure. But, okay. now, but then now they encourage the employees to tweet. Oh, during okay. the race and that's nice it, so it gets after social media so it get, generates a buzz mm. stuff like that yeah yeah <clears throat> and you've met Doug Bowles he's a personal person oh. he loves to see the tweets during he the race he loves it oh, oh my gosh yeah. that's one of the things I love the most about him well he's so um, he's so approachable oh definitely and and I think that's I mean he's not Tony George that's for sure so. <laughs> no <laughs> um, I, I got one good thing to say about him and other, some people are on the fence. Some people hate him because of the IRL. And I look at it like that whole thing right there was he was saving the, the speedway. Yeah, he was. In, in his mind, well, Clark wasn't going to come one year, and he didn't want to be known as the one that was going to kill the Indianapolis 500. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and I think that I actually read, I told Molly, I don't remember where, where it was. I'm sure I sent it to you at the time. But it was a really good article that talked about the split. And it was somebody who was involved on the cart end, or or maybe on the IRL end, but it was somebody that, like, got involved to kind of help smooth things over. It was, you know, too little, too late. Yeah. Like, they hired this person when they were already past the point of no return to so what was going to happen. Kind of yeah. Like it was like a mediator. Right. Yeah. Right. But it was like, they, they should have hired him, you know, a year in right. advance. Right. And something that he said, which I, which I thought was really important, is that, you know... Everybody had really good intentions from CART and IRL. Yeah. You know, everybody thought that they had the sport's best interest at heart, and nobody came at it from a a malicious standpoint to ruin this side or ruin that side. Everybody wanted to see the sport flourish. Right. They just didn't have great communication about how to do that. Right. But if you look back in history at that time, CART was ruled by Roger Penske, Mm -hmm. and Ganassi was coming up, Mm -hmm. and a few other like Derek Walker... Yep. And um, Pat Patrick, people like that, mm-hmm. and uh, Newman Haas. Yeah. Right? They were ruled by that. Which and they I think didn't, at the time they didn't give that, a fuck about the small teams. No, no they didn't. They did and not. I think at the time that it was formed, when it was like a four owners, buy owners kind of thing, they were looking out for teams when it, when it started. Yeah. But then it grew into this thing where it ended up just being, you know, the monopoly of the big teams right. and fuck the small teams. Right. And it should never should have gotten that no, way. That no. They should have but they should have stuck with like, okay, if we're if we're run by team owners, if we're all together as team owners, it should be all team owners. Right. And that's that's where I think Cart went wrong. Yeah. Yeah, they split their own throat. They did. I mean, I, they did. And, and, they did. And, and anybody that split mm-hmm. from the Indy five hundred, because regardless of what the rest of your season does, I mean, that's that's the Super Bowl of this sport. Right. If you have the Indy 500, you will win that war. Right. Period. Mm-hmm. It, a, it wasn't pretty for a lot of us. I've, but got, a, I've got a picture that from the Indianapolis Star that Gary Varvel drew. Mm-hmm. When a few of the teams started coming back, and one of them was Michael Andretti. And I'll, I'll take a picture of it and send it to you. <laughs> Please. It's, it's Michael Andretti sitting in a high chair. 
Tony George feeding him a plate, <laughs> a plate and it has a dead crow on it. Oh, my God. <laughs> because all the Andretti said that as soon as they split, Andretti, all the Andrettis are going, oh, those Indy cars are not safe. The mm-hmm. IRL cars are not safe. And they did have a problem when they backed them into the wall because that transmission yeah, and everything yeah. was hard. Yeah. It was harder, it was stiffer. Yeah. Right? And it was a lot st- in the in the car had a different wheelbase and everything. But it did. when they came back, oh Mike Mario Andretti's like, Oh no, 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 no. Uh they'll we'll never come back to the speedway. They just slit their own throat and I went, Okay. <laughs> I mean that was a big big Mario and uh AJ Foyt never liked each other anyway, but that really threw a, a big wrench into that. Oh, well, really? Well, who who are you, Mario, without the Indianapolis 500? Even though you've only won it one time. Yeah. Well, and yeah. Everybody knows you because you've led so many races. But yeah, it's like if you want to talk about who's the goat, it's clearly AJ Foyt. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so from your perspective, because we are going to talk, we just thought our Valentine's Day episode um, is going to be about the breakup between IRL and CARS. Oh, I'd like talking that if I could. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, in. no, we'll take it now. Go and then for we don't, it. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so, yeah, a, so, so as a fan and as a yellow shirt. Yeah, see, I have to look at it both ways. Yeah. yeah. So we want, we want to, we want to hear your, your take on it as a fan and as an employee. Because I've been, an, I've been a fan of the Indianapolis 500 since. I started listening to it on the radio, Sid Collins' days. Yeah. You know, and stay, since tuned, before, for since the, before you stay tuned for the greatest spectacle in racing and stuff like that, you yeah. know, when he coined that phrase. Yeah. And well, actually, so, to be clear, it was a woman who coined that phrase. Oh, was it really? It I was. thought he was this. No, it actually. Well, he, he, he started using I it. I say, yeah, right. he, he, he made it, it up, famous, yeah. but it was actually a woman who coined okay. it, and it was a female journalist in like okay. the 40s. 30s or 40s. He bitch then, didn't he? He, oh, he, he, he sh- sure did. He right. took it and made it his own. Right. But yeah, yeah. It, was, it was actually a woman who coined that Right, race. but I have to look at it both ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But because for years, I worked four qualifying days when we had four qualifying days. Mm-hmm. And race day. So I worked five days during the month of May. Yeah. And now, when they knocked it down to two days, I worked that a couple times, and I'm like, the whole, it's not the same. The mm-hmm. two days are not the same. Mm-hmm. And, and it's I, not. And, and now when they do this, they actually have the poll day on the second day. It, it, it's totally different. I, I can't knock it because they're trying to get people involved again. Right. And yeah. trying to keep get you to come back two days. Well, and we we discussed that. You know, and, and I, when they knocked it to two days, you know, the, how they do it where you qualify for, for the Fast 9 on what should be bump day. And right. hopefully this year what will actually be bump day. Right. And then they have the shootout on Sunday. It's so that you have fans both days. And right. I get that. But, but yeah, but it's like, I mean, I grew up. This is the house I grew up in. Yeah. Three blocks, three and a half blocks from the track. Right. You know, so I grew up knowing the four days of qualifications. I mean, I remember even, um, you know, in the early 2000s, there were still four days of qualifications. And right. we went down to a cousin's wedding in Gatlinburg, and it was one of the qualifications weekends. Right. And... Even though the family came from everywhere, we were the only family that actually came from Indiana at that time. Yeah, we still had quals on on the TV in the sh- in the cabin we all stayed in the entire weekend because right. it was Indy 500 qualifications. Right. and they televised yeah. quite a bit of it. Yeah. They tell, yeah, they would televise. I mean, and both weekends and all this business. And yeah. so I appreciate you know that they're trying to get fans and stands both days, and and I appreciate a lot of things they're trying to do to bring in a younger crowd because it was. You know, older crowd that was really dedicated to come four days, yep. and they and with the cart split and all that, it's like you ended up. There's almost like a generational gap, and I feel like they're doing a lot of really good things to bridge that and to bring people back into it and to generate interest in like our age group. And well, the the problem is now is that we've skipped a generation. We have, mm-hmm. and because I took my kids to, I got a divorce in in '98, so. I've already been working at the Speedway, obviously, since 82. Yeah. But I started taking my kids every May now Mm -hmm. because I have them on the weekends, and I'm taking the kids to the track. They grew up playing with other employees' kids. Mm -hmm. And so then I consequently, I stopped working like four days at the Speedway on qualifying days, and now I'm I'm just strictly a fan again (laughs) over in turn three or turn two. Depending on what day of the week it is, or something like that, but you, I gotta look at it both ways because I'm a fan for, we'll just say 29 days out of 30. Well, sure. it's 31 days in May. But yeah, yeah. Um, and there's actually a book I believe it was called 31 Days in May, and this was written in the, oh, I 
think early sixties, I think it was. I think I've seen that. Late fifties, yeah. yeah. And when I was in junior high, I checked out every book in the in the library in Greencastle Junior High, every book, and mm-hmm. read all these books. So consequently, I'm knowing. I, at one time, I could memorize, I could name all the winners. Wow. From 1911 to like 1960 something. That's awesome. And, but I got to look at it both ways because mm-hmm. I'm an employee, but I'm an employee not counting that road race that we have, mm-hmm. which I don't, I understand why the Speedway is doing it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Trying to keep, hey, it's fresh in the mind, you know, but sure, it's, yeah. it's a road race and I'm not a road race for Indy cars. I'm strictly, I like ovals. Oh no, you're in good company. No, we, I, I'm you're in very good. We, we call ourselves, uh, we always say, we are speed whores. There you go. And yeah. you you don't hit speeds on road courses. Well, now, now to take that back, Road America is pretty quick, pretty well, fast. That's true. That's true. But that's true. you're so big of a track, you it's a pain in the butt to go everywhere, and you yeah. got to do it. You got to go around everywhere, yeah, in order to see it. But yeah, I'm an oval person. But. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we're not mad at Ed Carpenter. I mean, right. his well, adopted dad was Tony George, and we're like, we get it. You only race ovals? Like, we get it. You we're we're big oval fans. Yeah. I, I understand. We need more ovals. We need to go back to Chicago land. We oh. need to go back to Kentucky. Oh. Chicago land would be awesome. Kentucky, oh. oh my I God. love the Kentucky Oh, track. shit, I went. Buddy of mine called me. He worked at Bell Terror, and he's like, hey, man, I got tickets. You want to yep. come down to this? And I'm like, okay. And I drove down there, and I went, shit. Oh. It's like two hours, dude. Yeah. It's, it's why nothing. have I been coming to this race? Oh, Everybody should go to that. I mean, if we, I would love to see an IndyCar race there again. Oh, well, yeah. and you know Sarah Fisher still holds a track record for speed. Yeah, yeah, um, and yeah, it, and it's just gr- it's a great track. There's not a bad seat in the house no. there. No, it's and one it's, of those like Bomberito where it doesn't matter where you are, you're seeing great racing right, the whole time. Right. And it's close enough that everybody from here would go right on down to it. Mm-hmm. Right, and everybody it was from the same would go. way Chicago land. Yeah, it was yeah. two and a yeah. half hours. Two and a half three hours. Juliet, yeah. Boom. Oh, perfect. Camping. Yeah, I right mean, there. We camped. We camped at Kentucky Speedway too. Yeah, because I mean, it was just a party freaking time. It was a good time. So, I don't know if they'll ever come back. Yeah, I really don't because of insurance reasons. I know because, yeah. because of what, the, the Dan Weldon accident. Mm. You, yeah. That's when we we st- the next year, bam! All the all the mile and a half ovals were gone. That's true. That's true. And I, I don't know if they'll ever come back. I mean. I would love it. Yeah. I would love it, too. I, um, yeah. I don't know if there's a, a better way to... Uh, there's a lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of speculation you can make about how you could have o- the shorter ovals be safe and, you know, and do your best to prevent an accident like that again. But a lot of it you but just can't speed, predict. the speed yeah. on the mile and a half is... You're, oh, you're pushing insane. 215. Yeah. All the time around the tracks on the mile and a half. Well, and what was it that uh, I think Joseph Newgarden said? Um, maybe about Bomarito, or maybe it was the tricky track. No, I think it was I think it was Bomarito that he said. You know, like you just really can't even get into a groove because every time you start to, I mean, you're just always Iowa. doing something. <coughs> yeah, Iowa. You're, yeah, Iowa was Iowa, definitely yeah. like that. Yeah, you're, it was. You're, you're, it was you're, not you're, Iowa. He was just you like no break. You're, you're, no. Yeah, he's like, there's no break. Like yeah. you are, you are just but right. track has concentrated the entire time. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that that's a different type of oval driving than, than ours. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I think that if ours wasn't 500 miles, that it would not be as significant. True. Well, it's just a history thing. Well, yeah, all the well. pageantry, yeah. Right. But, when I mean. you go to other races, because I've, I've been to Pocono the last two years. Okay. And there's there's nothing. Really? There's nothing pre-race. <sighs> I mean, there's just, there's, you go to all these. Uh, I've, that's just sad. Two years in a row, I lived the high life, and I went to eight IndyCar races. It is two years life. in a row. I went to Kentucky. I went to Nashville. I went mm. to Richmond. Mm. I used to belong to the IndyCar fan club, and at that time, you could ride a bus to Richmond, Virginia, for $11. That's Round not, trip. That's not bad at oh, all. Yeah. And but you had to buy your ticket and buy your hotel, your suite, sure. blah blah blah. But eleven bucks, eleven bucks, and oh they're driving God. you. You oh. can even drive there for that. Oh hell I no! Know. No hell no! And we went to went to Homestead. And now I the bus didn't go to Homestead. I drove to Homestead sure. two years in a row because I wanted to check that out. And I went the first year and went, okay, I, this is cool. Mm-hmm. It's warm. Mm-hmm. It's cold. It's snowing at home because it was right. in, Mar- in March. Yeah. Yep. You know, but. Yeah, I mean, I lived the high life for two years going to these races, and they were all ovals. Oh, man. Now, this last past season, I went to a lot of races again. Because mm-hmm. we went to the the, fir- the first race I went to was the 
uh, uh, Grand Prix of Indianapolis, yep. and then the mm-hmm. 500, and then yeah. the next week. You went to Belle Isle? Went to Belle Isle. Okay. Doug and I went to Belle Isle with Mr. Ted. Well, uh, now, Tom didn't go, but uh, Ted went with us, too. Yeah, yeah. And another school teacher, Monty's school teacher, went with us. And then the two weeks later, was it two weeks later? I uh, ended up going to... Um, Texas. Right? Iowa. Yeah, I'm going to go to Texas this next year, though. Okay. I'm going to go again. I went once, and I did not enjoy it because it was hot. It's and it was Texas. It, and uh, Elio led every freaking lap of that race. It was not even a race. Oh, day. man. Ugh. But we went to a lot of races this year. And yeah. I'm going to do it well, again Well, you next did year. mid-Ohio. Yep. Um, went to Road America. Yep. Um, um, you did Bomberito. Bomber- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gateway, yeah. 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 Pocono. Yep. Yep. Went okay. to Pocono then the next week. Pocono was on a Sunday. The next week, the the, the Indy... Well, no, wait a minute. Hang on. Back that up. Was it Pocono? Well, Pocono and Iowa were the same week, basically. Yeah, they're yeah. like... You just yeah. flip over. Yeah. yeah. It was like a Sunday and then a Saturday. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a good time, man. The job I've got now, where I can I can take off and I can go. That's, That's awesome. awesome. So That's it's helpful. it's a cool event to do. So yeah, so as a fan, you're more of an oval fan. So. Oh, definitely. But so, I mean, but to 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 get my fix, mm-hmm. I had to go to road course races this year. Well, and our first, I mean, we went to the Indy GP, the GP of Indy, right? Um, and then the Mid Ohio was our first right. road course on the road, right? Yeah. And and that's a, that's a great track. It was fun. It's a, it's and, a and, and the grounds are great, and all the people there were awesome. That was did, one of the things that we said that you, we loved. You didn't camp, though, did you? We yeah, did. We did. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. yeah. Why didn't you camp with us? Because we didn't... We, you didn't know where we were at. Well, we hadn't oh, met wait, you yet. We hadn't met you yet. We hadn't met you yet. Okay, but you hadn't met Doug? No. no. Oh, you had when you walked up that time? You didn't even know? Doug? No, that was the first time. Oh, my God, when you two walked up, I thought you knew him from... <laughs> no, no. Wow, because I was sitting there when you walked up. That's no, we Western. had we had interacted on Twitter and it said that you know we want to meet up and all that and then we walk up and we see his big sign with you know the Indy camping yeah Indy and camping. it says at Indy five hundred camping right and, and I was like, like Indy five hundred camping right and they were like hey and I was like we're fast cars fast girls right there you go <laughs> you know right. and then they yelled and so you know, we just sat down and just were fast friends but okay. no that was the first time that we met any of you guys it's a good group I mean we when we travel in, in a group like that it's it's fun. It is. It is. Nice. Well, just like when you were going to go to the twenty four this year, you're going to meet some really fun people. Oh, uh, and nobody is an asshole in this group that we're with. That's what I really yeah. like about it. I mean, yeah. we met guys. Um, we have a group that comes from New York every year now too. Wow. That's awesome. Damn. So, so with the split, so as a fan and as an employee, where do you, where did you fall on? All I that? had to be f- side with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway hmm. for what Tony George was doing, because, like I said in the past, he was. Protecting his and family's investment, because how would you like to be and go down in history as the guy that killed the Indianapolis 500? No, that's not right. It. Or the family that because we're not Holman family now. Basically, we're the George family. Mm-hmm. And who, who wants to be known as the fam- the person that killed the Indianapolis 500? So he's got to protect his investment and his family's investment. I, I dig it. I dig that part. Sure. Did, I wasn't mad at the cart guys. But as May came along, that shit started really pissing me off when all these guys were like, well, fuck the 500. Fuck the Speedway. Who needs milk? You're going to be back. Yeah. You'll be back one day, fuckers. I'll tell you what my favorite is the years that they tried to run, what was it, the Michigan 500? Oh, the US 500? Yeah. On the same day? Okay, that that was way before any kind of social media, Mm -hmm. right? And... They had that accident on the first before they even got the green flag. Mm-hmm. As they were coming to the green flag, they yeah, had somebody pilot. crashed on the fucking parade. That's her. Yeah, and he used the pole car. He, 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 it was Jimmy. I watched it on the. I think it was one of those thirty but thirty for thirty things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Somebody put it on Twitter a couple of weeks ago, and I watched that. It was the ESPN thing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And Jimmy Vassar did a did a Kogan. <laughs> and just turned the car right into the other two front guys Stuffs in the front row on the parade and lab. wrecked half the freaking field. Mm-hmm. Well, within five minutes of this happening, there's a buzz in the grandstand because I think they started their race be- like a half hour before the 500. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And there's a buzz through the grandstand, and it's going through the grandstand. What happened in Michigan? <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, and, and this is way... Way before... Way before any yeah. social, social media, media. Somebody got a phone... Yes. Yeah, yeah there you Somebody go. I mean, knew, and it's it, like, it was did you hear that the US 500... Yeah, they wrecked half the field. 
and they're going to come back out with backup <laughs> cars. And we're like, I mean, yeah, there was a lot of people laughing at that shit. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. And, and I can tell you right now, from my perspective, there was no empty seats. Yeah. There might have been in other stands, but ESAM was our normal capacity. I mean, yeah. But I looked at it, and, and then as, well, who was it first that came back? I think it was Ganassi. Mm-hmm. Right? And he came back, and then Penske came back. Oh, and then Andretti came back. And, and then, Jeff. oh, yeah, yeah, one by one by mm-hmm. one. And then, but hands. you had a few people like Jerry Forsythe that was like, fuck this. I am never going to race in Indianapolis again. Okay, and he Jerry. was one of the big guys, too, that was in mm-hmm. on that. Jerry Forsythe yeah. and, and uh, 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 Kel, Kevin Calvonian, is that his mm-hmm. name? That's... That was part of KV Racing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at least he saw the handwriting on the wall. He's like, inevitably, we're all going to be back at Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. And you knew it, it might be five years, it might be six years, ten years, but it's gonna happen. It's not. I mean, you still got the greatest event in the world. Yeah, you can't be an. Oh, I mean, you can't be an open wheel driver and not give respect to the right. five hundred. Right. What even if you are strictly F one, you still give respect to the. Well, look what happened this year. Yeah, yeah we had an F one driver come and race yeah. because he really wanted to do it. His team sucked, and he knew it. And he's got a great manager. Yeah. With. Um, um, God darn it, what's his name? That it's from Zionsville. That the team manager's from Zionsville. Brown? Yeah, Zach Brown. Yeah. Yeah. He had that yeah, just yeah. marketing yeah. out of the, out of Zionsville. And he was and he's like, Yeah, go, man. We'll we'll get this to work. And they and it, an active driver comes. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. That's yeah. Yeah. I mean it's I mean I know. How are you gonna not be here? Seriously, if you're going to be an IndyCar driver, how are you not going to be there? And all those guys are, oh, yeah, screw that, screw that. We're not going back. And eventually, they're all back. Yeah. Now, there's where we lost our fan base. Yes. Because nobody knew what the hell was going on. That's exactly what happened. And now you got two different series split. Well, we didn't have the advent of social media. Right. And so it was just, it was simply press releases, and if you sought it out, you could find the information. But it wasn't readily available to everybody. From from <clears throat> the, my perspective, from hearing people that are the taxi cab fans, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I don't even call those races. The, to me, those are just events. No. Yeah. yeah. Nas, they're, they're, Nas cab. They're, they're nap car, whatever nap, you want to call Ooh, it. I like nap car. Yeah. That's what happened um, this year. It's just... Well, I can. I know these drivers. They're American drivers. Okay, yeah, you're correct on that. Thank you. But are they the best drivers in the world? Not necessarily. No. I mean, you could put. Not a fan of Danica. Put her in a taxi cab, and she can still drive one. Yeah. Not very good, but she's still out there racing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But. I I just Indy cars where everybody wants to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's yeah. how many taxi cab drivers. Oh, I love driving IndyCar. Right? Yeah. Whereas how driving. many IndyCar drivers say, oh, I'd love to drive NASCAR. Yeah. They all say, oh, I, I, I'm open to that opportunity. I'd enjoy it, this and that. But it's nobody's big goal to drive in NASCAR. Right. No. But unfortunately, with that split is where NASCAR gained a bunch of yep. fans is because yep. they didn't have that drama. They didn't right. have that turmoil. <clears throat> and so, you know. Nobody knew, should I be a car fan? Should I be an IRL fan? Well, yeah. I, I know it, these it's guys. Pre- I know these. And so it's like, uh, yeah. all the shit's happening. It's like, I like some guys here. I like some guys here. I don't know what's going to happen with us. Oh, but I know all these guys, and they seem to have our shit together. Right. And we so, lost big names. We did. In and, that time frame with Rick Mears retiring. Yeah. And Mario, and then Foyt, and blah, blah, blah. All these yep. other guys that are Bobby Ray Hall, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and Danny Sullivan, and all had, these names. Had all that retired. not happened, NASCAR would have never been bigger than IndyCar. In my opinion, it, it all happened at the same time. at the same time, right? It all, I mean, it, and and it's it like was like a perfect is, storm, right? Mm-hmm. For NASCAR, yes, yes, and not a perfect storm for no. For it was a perfect reason. storm in all the wrong ways for right. us in open wheel, right? I, I think had that not happened, NASCAR would not have ended up with the fan base and notoriety that it right. has now, right? I think that had we had a stable open wheel league and there wasn't all this unknown that the fans would have just stayed there and said, well, we know these drivers and this is that. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know how we're going to ever get it back. I mean, my kids I have the opportunity now to go with me anytime I go to the track because one of these, 
Yeah. Pretty much carte blanche. I can yeah. get in any Well, you're day. leaving one of those with you. Um, we didn't mention that beforehand, but if <laughs> any credentials you bring with you, you leave at least one. That's part of the interview process. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, it's fine. But I think with NASCAR's stars, everybody's retiring. Yep. E, you know, Junior's out, Danik is out, everybody's mm-hmm. leaving. Now, I think they're going to see a decline well, in NASCAR. Well, they already have. Yeah. I mean, it, all, the, all those tracks are cutting out seats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, the first time that we went to Daytona for the 24, there was a grandstand on the backstretch. Huh. And yeah. then they knocked part of that grandstand off, but they left what they called the Budweiser patio, I think it was. Sounds about and right. And we stood up there. It sounds about right for NASCAR. We stood up there and watched, because uh, the back straightaway going into the bus stop. Ah, okay. And it was a good vantage point. Because okay. you can see them over there on the coming into International Horseshoe and the Ferris wheels between both sides and that Lake Lloyd is right there mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. everything's going on. It's a cool little patio, but it, way up in the air. And then the next year, it's gone. Oh, well, damn it. Yeah, it's gone. Damn it. And all these tracks are, like Richmond's, took out seats. Mm-hmm. All these tracks are minus in seats, so you don't see that it's there's nobody not. sitting yeah. there. Well, and that's, we've talked about that, um, like for the Brickyard and <clears throat> and other events we've been, I mean, like even the SS, SCCA, which we had an awesome time at that. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, it's funny because when you go to the IMS, it's such a huge event and there are so, there's more mm-hmm. grandstand seats there than anywhere. Mm-hmm. Right. And any venue, when you have that many grandstand seats, you can shut down sections and you, you know, and, and kind of herd people into certain areas, but it, it still looks empty. Right. You could have... 100,000 people in those stands, and it will still look bare bones. This is what we have talked to. I mean, did, did you happen to go when we had the couple IMSA races at the Speedway years ago? No, two no. Years ago when we had the, years. It was called the Rolex Series at that time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we had, yeah, we, I think it was two of them, maybe three. I was living up before. Oh, me. my God, it was so fun. And I was like, mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to go. This is what, yeah, they and need it's to. like three-hour race or hour and a half, mm-hmm. whatever it was, and I'm like, this is this is why I want to go to Daytona because I, I don't I, twenty four hours of this crap yeah and it's hilarious I mean this is good this I want to see this it's good racing and yeah <clears throat> we've been trying to get them back because they came in on the taxi cab weekend oh okay and they raced on Friday and they had a huge crowd mm-hmm. but it didn't look like it because everybody was in the grass yeah exactly because because it was everybody's in the infield watching watching yeah, from there because that's. Right, uh, and I mean, they're, that's the reason why IMSA doesn't want to come back to the Speedway. And every time that we see Doug Bowles, and like in the winter, we're always like, "Can we get an IMSA race again?" We've, we've actually like, started to say that too. We are in constant negotiation. Well, we IMSA is owned by NASCAR, though. I know. Well, and we at the uh, at the goading of, of of Doug Thornton have say now. Can we get an IMSA race and at least twelve hours? At, at least, right? At least twelve hours. Right. I'll settle for six. Mind. But see, they're, they're start events high. Are, start high. Start high. They're, they're I mean, events. I would I would love twenty four hours at the Brickyard oh. sells itself. Sells itself. But there, you'll see that what the twenty four is about, like. I a mean, Daytona. Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. You you could create a whole badge over like. Doing shit to help out other people at the track for Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, and you could guarantee yourselves hundreds. I mean, I'm not saying that I want to be charged with that because I don't want to be around the fucking kids at the race. I'm right. just saying. But you'll see liability. <laughs> you'll, you'll see I'm not saying I'm in charge of it. The track themselves, Molly. You'll also see liability. when you go to Daytona for the 24, how their setup is different than anything that we could ever do. Okay. At the Speedway. I'm very excited for that because I've never been to that track. Well, and I am I mean, excited to see the whole NASCAR museum and all that because uh, their headquarters is there. Well, I mean, I'm just... <laughs> I mean, I hear you. I'm just saying, I, I like to look at things comparatively. But I know I ours understand, is better, But... In, we go inside because of the gift shop. And that's where the ticket uh, ticket box is at, too. So you got sure. to get, get your tickets. So, hey, we go inside for that. Do you want to tour the museum? No. That's what we hear. Do you want to take it for the music? No. No. No, thank you. No, no thank you. We're from no, Speedway. No, no. We like fast cars. <laughs> we're from Indianapolis. Uh, yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, fuck you. We're from Indianapolis. Yeah, fuck you. We're from Indianapolis. Now, that shirt, like I said, only comes out for the 24. For that. I mean, get up on Saturday morning, mm-hmm. put that shirt on with my checkered shorts. Yeah. Let's go. And we're, we're ready to go. 
And people know me by that freaking shirt. Oh, and I can't believe how many people walk up. And we're in the fan fest before the race, and people are walking up going, Hey, love the shirt. We're from Shelbyville. Or whatever, you know. <laughs> well, we are actually going to, so we've been inspired by your shirt. We are. And so Molly and I were both born in Speedway. She she moved away at yeah. years old. So we're going to have shirts this year for Carbon to say, Fuck you, we're from Speedway. So. We printed up, I, I printed up some ones from, uh, uh, what's, you see the commercials on TV all the time. The, like Teespring or... The t-shirts print, print up for family events. Yeah, stuff. yeah. I printed up a bunch of them years ago that said, hell yes, we're from Speedway, Indiana. <laughs> because they wouldn't print up. Fuck you. We're from, we're from Speedway. Yeah, we're going to have to go and, and find... They even, I even got a phone call while I'm doing this online from them from the, that said, uh, do you do know you have a cuss word. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, can you not print it? Well, we just wanted to let you know that there is a cuss word in your draft. You're like, I don't think anybody types <laughs> fuck accidentally. Oh, right. Well, no, this was the hell yes. Okay. Oh, hell oh. yes, we're from Speedway, Indiana. <laughs> Do you know that there's a cuss word? It's That's not a cuss word, it's in the Bible. I, I know, but they called it. <laughs> yeah, to we're going to have to go get our own. Yeah. Um, I've got a lady phone number I can give to you both, and she'll print anything. Beautiful. And it's a good price, too. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Even better. I mean, one shirt, 20 shirts. I've already talked to her on the phone. She's like, a, there's a tweet, uh, a Facebook post that she has, like, it's the new chatter of Avon. Oh, okay. And then there's an old chatter of Avon. Well, she's on both of them, and she can do print-up shirts. Awesome. So, and I well, asked her, I said, one or how many? She goes, well... And she quoted me a price of like 15 bucks for one shirt, half the, with the half I'm, sleeves. And I said, now, you do print up cuss words, right? She goes, what What do you mean? And I said, I got a shirt that says, fuck you, we're from Indianapolis. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'd print that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's, there's a line. Well, that's probably. probably because I would love, I want for Carb Day or for some of the Qualls Days for us to have some Fast Cars, Fast Girl shirts. That'd be cool. So, yeah. But so they might say on the front, fuck you, for Speedway. Now, so. did you see my Carb Day shirt? Um, fuck you, it's carb day? Yeah, fuck you, you fucking fuck, it's carb it's car- day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a $30 t-shirt, I wear it one fucking day a year. Yeah, but, no, <laughs> it, it gets its use. Right. But, no, I've taken a picture of you in that shirt as yeah. well. Long, that's, long that's, before we met. That's my carb day shirt. That, I mean, that comes out one day fuck a year. Fuck you, you fucking fuck, fuck Yeah, nobody day. will get that oh, if I wore that at any other event. No. Right? Right. No. It's only it's only Indy 500 fans. Like, you say Carb Day, and they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, we day. have to explain to people when they go to other facilities. And they're like, what what's is Carb, carb day? day? Wait, what do you mean Carb? Is that like where everybody doesn't eat carbohydrates or something? <laughs> you're, like, you're like, yeah, because we're really concerned about our health. And and our there you go, right. Sure, that's what we do in that's, Indiana. That's, that's the problem. Yeah, it's the carbs. <laughs> right. Oh. Uh, so tell us, what have you? what's the craziest thing you've seen? Tell us some stories, because um, I know you've seen some stuff. you got to give us a Definitely. Back, go back into the 80s, and the first day at Qualls was, at that time, was called the second biggest sporting event in the world, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you had well over 100,000 people wow. that would show up for one day at Qualls. Yeah. And, show up live. Not even, right. I mean, and it was televised right. on network television. And we used to have, and this is before, not that this is bad, before <laughs> MAD was invented. Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Mm-hmm. Sure. And people would come and just uh, get Whoa. obliterated yeah. on the first day of calls. And I would see frats oh God. organizations show up, excuse me, on the first day of calls, and they would just drink themselves silly. <laughs> and one year, I, I remember it rained oh God. during the calls, and one guy was so drunk, his group moved away from him and just left him in the rain. Because <laughs> he passed out. Right. Okay, and then we used to have a guy that he brought his, he was a Napa mm, district manager or something like that over so many stores. He would hand out tickets to his customers, and they would show up, and he would have cases upon cases upon cases of beer. Oh, my God. And soda. Yeah. And it got to the point where he fucking stopped, stopped doing, bringing it because he, the, the crowd stopped. Stopped coming. Huh. And I don't, and that was about the time, the, the split, split the right split. around that time is when that all stopped. But when, when all that stopped, started about the drinking and driving and stuff like that, the, the huge parties and the, all these frat guys, I'm talking not 10, I'm talking 20, like, 30, mm-hmm. a big chapters group on chapters, up. yeah. 
And they're all over the place in the in East End. Because when you worked at the Speedway, you worked in the same place you worked race day. Oh. For the qualifying days, you worked in the same yeah. place. You might not have been in the exact same stand, but you were in the same area. Stand. You, were you weren't going to work race day in turn one no. and be in turn four for no. the walls. No, no, yeah. no. Not unless you requested something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the sure, if you got out of the grandstand E, it was difficult to get back. Uh, yeah, I bet. So I you never asked, to go, never asked to leave your area. Yeah. Um, I say, same with garages. I know that from Mary. Right. It was the same same thing. Like, once you were in the garages, you didn't request the lead because you were never going to get back in. Right. Now, it scared me a few years ago when we had the Rolling Stones race. Yeah. Was, yeah. The, the Rolling Stones race. The Rolling Stones concert. Yeah, yeah. I, they asked for volunteers, and I said, well, what, what would be our job? And they're like, Gates. And I went, I'm going to clean one thing up. I will work Gates. For this event. Mm-hmm. But if next, I show up for race day and I'm, and I'm supposed to be at Gates, I'm there's going to be some, I'm going to be calling some people. I'm going to riot. <laughs> right. And then the same thing happened when we had the airplane race last year. Yeah. They, they asked for volunteers. And so now I'm in Northeast Vista. Okay. No, 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 North Vista mm-hmm. working for the airplane race. Yeah. And I'm like, but, I, I was worried when I got my stuff the next year that. I was going to be in East End. Am I going to be in North Vista now or whatever? And, but it, I guess you could say seniority now. Yeah. And they want to keep you happy because, okay, so this guy's like, okay, so if you're watching the race and we catch you, you're fired. If you're smoking in the grandstands and we catch you, you're fired. Um, you're taking pictures, we catch you, you're fired. Oh, my God. Um, you're not to watch the race. You're to face the crowd. And we were like, hang on there, dude. Uh, this doesn't work for a stadium. This is a different kind of stadium. Yeah. We need to know what's going on behind us, too. You have to know. You have to know. Right? Because you have to know what's going on so that you can know what the best plan of action is to right. direct the traffic. Right. If there's a yellow or a red, you know that you're going to have a mass influx of people leaving the stands to yeah. go down. Right. You have to be aware of that. Right. Mm-hmm. And it came into play a few years ago. It was Sato, I think it was. Was it Sato? Hit the wall and won in a place where nobody hits the wall. And he scraped along the wall and just chucked all kinds of parts. Oh God! Not 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 big parts, just but, and just parts up into the wall, up in there. But it was little shavings and car, carbon fiber yeah, and yeah. tire and stuff like that. So there's therefore I got to jump into something that I don't never do. I got to get out and get in the front row in the what we call the DMZ, where I was telling you all the seats are taken out, and I got to get out there and make sure everybody in the first couple rows. Is everybody okay? Has anybody got stuff in their eyes? Yeah, anybody hit with anything? We need a manic over here for anything like that? Yeah. So if, if I'm not watching the race, then I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. You don't but even this, know to check for that. And that guy's had seniority 10, 15, 20 years over me that said, I don't need this crap. This is a part-time job. Yeah. I don't need to be threatened. Well, I mean, we met Kentucky Joe at the uh, at the air race, and he drives up from... from Louisville, yeah. Well, I mean, South of Louisville. He sat, yeah, I say, like, he's he's around Elizabethtown. He's BFE Kentucky and drives yeah. up to be a yellow shirt. I met him in the in the old, uh, in the campground. Yeah. He, his, 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 he was camping with some guys that um, were camped right beside him. I mean, I had met the previous year, and he latched on to us. Yeah. And, like, I mean, and, hell, he didn't even know us, and we took him downtown ever since. Uh, he's a good guy. But it's like there's so many yellow shirts that drive. But going back to the stories, that's the funniest ones. Is this going? Is the people partying? And <laughs> it was just it? a party. Yeah, yeah. You know? Now race day, nobody gets stupid drunk in East End. No. no. You spent good money for that seat, and I'm talking even back in the '80s. That seat was like forty bucks. Yeah. But your GA was what? Seven bucks. Exactly. Yeah. Eight Five bucks, or seven. Ten. Yeah. yeah. At the most. It's so fine. Well, don't get drunk and watch the Indianapolis 500 in my stand. No, I mean there are stands that, that happens, and it's funny because um, we sit, our seats are in um, are in the paddock. Yeah, um, and it took a lot of years to get there. Right. The, the first year we had our own seats, the stands aren't even there anymore. It was like um, Little League soccer stands in turn one, mm-hmm. and it was I think. You're talking about like the, the '98 race. You're talking about the little bitty area that's got the the. Are you, is that what we're talking about on the inside? On the inside of Turn One. Yeah. Now there's like well, that little cutaway and. 
Yeah, where the pit car, where the right. race car hangs out. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah, like that, the, that little bitty right there by the scoreboard. Yes. Uh, what do they call that? I I'd have to have a map, but I, people will still buy those seats, and people will come up, and they're like, "Where's this at?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, why did you buy that?" <laughs> right? Because they're all you, you can't see. You can't see. see anything. But it was you know we because um, the year before we had gotten Southwest Vista, and it was. Through somebody from my mom's hometown in Frankfurt, Indiana. Yeah. And it was their parents had these seats and they bought a block of seats in Southwest Vista. And so anybody, you know, and so her parents had gotten seats there. And so that's who we got them through. And then at some point he was like, I'm not buying seats for my, all my parents' friends. Like my parents are dead. Yeah. Like if you don't know me, I'm not buying your seats anymore. Right. And so we decided, you know, and so we had gone that year and then we were like, we should start getting our own seats. And so the first year we were, I mean, it was bottom of the barrel, but there were still great attendance. And so we, we didn't have access to decent seats and we saw literally this much of the track. Yeah. I mean, we're on the inside of turn one. Like, we yeah. saw that. We saw the inside of turn one and nothing else. Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, uh, some kind of terrace is what those are called. It makes it sound like it's a fancy. great seat. It is but not. But it's not. No. It is not. No. Well, I say the, those seats aren't even there anymore. Yeah, they are. That little bitty... It, oh, no, it, no. It, no, the ones where we were, okay. they're not there. This, this is why we're by the motorcycle we, park. We that were, little bitty uh, thing is still there. That oh, no, that one is still there. Yeah. I know what that you're talking is, about, yeah. but it's now, similar to that one. I, yes. Oh, no, I heard those. It's like um, the exact opposite of South Vista. It's right across from it. Yeah. And it's a little bitty, like you yeah. said, like, like kid high school yes. football game, yeah. bleachers, and little bitty things. Now, the first year I started working in 82, all my friends had been telling me stories of what was going on across the track. Okay, <laughs> over in the original, yeah, um, the OG snake pit, the snake pit, the original yeah. snake pit. My friends were all, "Man, you're gonna love this because if the race is boring, we watch what the hell's going on over there." And I show up and I'm going, "They build bleachers." You're like, "What the hell?" There's bleachers all the way through turn one mm-hmm. on the inside now, and I'm like, "We can't see anything." But I'm telling you what, there still wasn't what whatever the hell was going on was pretty. Dark. Pretty awesome uh-huh. because the whole top row, I don't think they watched any of the race. <laughs> <laughs> they were all standing over there looking what was going on behind them. Apocalypse, that's what it was on in the snake pit back then. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was freaking hilarious yeah. to see that. And go back in, in history where those guys over there on race day are standing over there in their shirts off, mm-hmm. baking, and we're over here in Grand Sandy. <laughs> Colder than a mother. Oh, yeah. I mean, we got a jacket on because the grandstand concrete and it was, yeah. And you get the wind. The wind goes up. A little right? bit of wind coming yep. up and this, yeah, it was cold. It's like a whole different that. climate. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So what's, um, what's your favorite memory of? Well, the, like I said, the first year I worked, mm-hmm. I got to go down at the end of the race and I am standing where Gordon Johncock is coming down in the pace car and I'm standing there because we at that time when we, we, we still open the gates up so you can walk across the track and mm-hmm. at that time you were supposed to do continue. they still do that? oh yeah, yeah. Okay. it's I open see. pre-race and post-race both okay I, th- I thought they still did that for the 500, for 500 only yeah. right and now they encourage you to go out there and come, and just hang mm-hmm. loiter whatever you want to call it they did and, not and, use and, to no, encourage no 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 keep no. going now, we it, actually went out there with a rope and split off the crowd one way, so, mm-hmm. so people didn't try to mingle, and yeah. and you and you had guys saying, "Come on, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going." Well, I'm at the end of the rope, okay, and here comes the pace car with Gordon Johncock in it, and I'm like, the car goes by me, and I, I'm like, boom, 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 the Camaro just that '82 mm-hmm. Camaro, mm-hmm. Looks like, and I'm like. Oh my freaking god! I just got that, and I ran my hand down as it drove past me, and I'm like, I'm 22 years old. Right? right yeah, you're like, right. I have to touch it. I have to touch it. I have to touch it. Touch the pace I car. Touch it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, uh, we would all still do that today, though. Oh, definitely. Oh, you gotta yeah. touch it. Definitely, I gotta yeah. touch it as it drives by me, and I'm going. This. That's what I just said earlier. I'm like, this is something that I will do mm-hmm. until I can't do it anymore. Absolutely. I mean that that was great to watch. The the last. 10 laps of that race. Mm-hmm. And I'm standing down where, where we take those, those, that ANCO barrier off mm-hmm. so they can go across that track. That was my vantage point for the last 10 laps of the race. Standing wow. like this far is what it looked like. It's what it felt like, you know, two feet from the wall. And all I'm seeing is hearing the cars coming and I see two helmets. 
I mean, the only the cars were so low, all you saw was the helmet above the car. Yeah. yeah. And, and then when they go into one, the only way you can be like closer is if you can been driving. Oh hell yeah! It's so <laughs> freaking cool. I mean, I still get cold chills from thinking about that. Yeah. I mean, that was so cool for the first year that I got to do that. Wow. That is cool. I mean, then you. Go, I mean that that. I mean, that there's is other races cool. that are cool. That I've seen, like the 92 500 was so freaking cold. Mm-hmm. And if you go back and look at history, I mean, every time they threw the green flag, somebody's into the wall mm-hmm. because the tires were cold. Yeah. The speedway sold out no of control. everything that would resemble a jacket. <laughs> they, people were buying socks. Yeah. That yeah. were for gloves. Yeah. Hats. We, we, kind of we hat. tried that for the air race. We tried oh, the air race. Yeah. 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 It was definitely cold. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it was. No, there's no coffee to be bought, no hot chocolate to be bought. Anything hot, but anything But I'm telling you, that's still a hell of a damn good race. Well, yeah. I mean, that 90... I, listen to me, I'm telling you, I've seen so... I can watch... In, in May of every year, they always, on ESPN Classic, 500s, the, like the mm-hmm. whole weekend, pre-500, the they'll have... It's a one-hour or two-hour... And it's all the it's, best it's, clips of... It's, it's the race from that year. Sometimes they'll show some qual, uh, from older stuff... They'll show some qualification highlights and stuff like that. But I can watch like the first five minutes of that race and go, oh, I remember that day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can tell you who won. Wow. That's, in- that's amazing. I, got, I mean, I just it, it, it comes back that you can remember that yeah. stuff. Just like I was telling you before I even knew you two about the story about Mario Andretti hitting squirrel during the race. <laughs> yeah. That squirrel was running along the, the fence on the, the, the catch fence. Yeah. Back and forth, back and forth. You know, we're in his one day a year. This is a huge crowd. Right. Right. There was no brickyard at that time. Yeah. It was the month of May and that was it. So for 30 days, there was all these people hanging out on the track and this squirrel was just nuts with 250,000 plus people. Because the rest, of the, year, the rest of the year, that's where he lives. Right. That's his And life. he's like, what in the fuck is happening? He's running back and forth on the catch fence and also he's trying to, he try to tell track. everybody to get the hell out of his home. He's out there running on the track oh and the crowd is doing just what you just did. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh. You just hear the crowd going ooh and and all and because the squirrel's like standing out there and he's like, what do I do? You know, and then Mario freaking hits the squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Leave it up to Mario Andretti. To hit an AMC. It, it would squirrel. be Mario. And then, At you know, the a few laps later, it's like Mario is slowing down. That, that's what's coming across. Yeah. Tom Carnegie's saying it on the PA. The system, squirrel. So. That's what the squirrel. I don't think the squirrel was what put him out. No. I mean, it was just. He I hit, mean, let's be he real. He hit the squirrel, and, and it was funny because when they, they threw caution, <laughs> they had to throw caution. Well, they had to. Right, and here comes the safety guy, and he picks it up. Out there, you know, Ugh. he picks it up. Now, was it With flat? It, was it? Totally oh no, no, no! It was, it, it was still, you know, twitching. It, oh, come on! You get hit with two hundred and twenty mile an hour. It ain't twitching. I don't think you're gonna be twitching, but he's picking it up by the tail. Oh. Yeah, and and the crowd's like, ooh, oh, yeah. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I mean, you got, I don't know how many people in my stand, thirty thousand in the whole East. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah. Thirty, forty thousand, whatever. 20,000, whatever it is, sure. and, and everybody's in this area is seated. Uh, everybody's all in oh, the same it. moment. Yeah. Because everybody's watching this. Yeah. God, it was. Isn't that the beauty of a going to a race, though? Is that when something happens in front of you, everybody, everybody that sees it, you're all, oh, you're yeah. all family immediately. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite things about, yeah. and, and that's what I loved about when we went to Mid Ohio, is that we immediately just felt like we were just welcomed in as like family. It was like, oh, yeah. come you, on in. You should have like, came back that evening. Did you go to the concert? No. Okay, because no. they had a concert. It didn't start when it was supposed to, but we went to it, and oh boy. <laughs> Doug passed out. Okay. <laughs> As Doug well does. Uh, after, not surprised. Okay, he, after nine he o'clock, drove he, us. After 9 o'clock, he's usually down. I yeah. will say prior to that concert, he was driving the golf cart. Maybe I shouldn't say he passed out. Maybe I say he Doug, Doug's a 9 o'clock at night person. Sure. <laughs> However you want to say it, but I'll tell you this. We've been in the golf cart for seven and a half seconds before. I was like, Doug, maybe I should drive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we had been in the car five seconds, and I'm already praying. Right. Yeah. And so I've got a leg, like, blocked. Oh, yeah. And and I do one of these, and I grab yeah. him. And so we are, this is about halfway through the golf course. I, I grab him. I said, if I go out, you go out. He goes, I don't know if that's a good decision. I'm the driver. And I go, 
I think that you need to adjust your choices accordingly because if I come out, you're coming out. He rolled a golf cart. At Mid Ohio, did he tell you about that? This year? No, a couple years ago. Well, it was last year. I don't know. I don't know how we didn't roll. I guess yeah, I mean, he I'll rolled it. He came sliding up to the campsite and cut it sideways in that gravel. Oh yeah, and it mm-hmm. rolled over. I mean, was it Doug did it or Gabe or Ted? I can't. One of them did it and it ended up under the golf cart. He and broke a rib. I think it was Ted. Oh Jesus! I, I, Ted, mm-hmm. I think it was Ted that was talking about a broken rib. Or I was mean, it Doug had a broken rib? One of them ended up under the golf cart. He hit those brakes when he saw Scott. I thought, this is how I'm dying. Just the, the car is loaded. Gotta love him. But, but yeah, but that's what I, I just, I mean, I just love that. And, and you know, and I don't feel like it's like that in all the stands. Like Stand E, Southwest Vista. I feel like all of the Turn 1 stands. Um, so we're, as, I, as I'm standing there every morning, these newer badges have my name First name, yeah, bigger, and people walk up every year and go, "Hi, Brian." Okay, I, I've seen you, but I don't know you. You're yeah. like, I don't know who you I are. Don't know. Yeah. But then you know who I am. Yeah, and people walk up every year and they go, "Back again, right?" And I'm going, "You're here too, right?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> but it is. I mean, it is pretty fun though, because I mean, even in which I will say one of the things that I. That I I was disappointed in with our seats in Paddock, which I love our seats. Uh, I mean, we're, we are actively trying to move to Standy, obviously. Right. But um, one of the things is that in a lot of other seats, there are these people who have been there, like you've talked about, for decades and decades right. and decades. And we haven't had that experience mm-hmm. in our seats in the Paddock. The people around us every year are different. Right. I don't know if it's that it's some scalper has those seats <laughs> and they're selling. Them. I don't. I don't know what the the, the deal Paddock is. Paddock seats used to be. It used to be kind of that legacy kind of yeah, feel, but it, it's not it's anymore. It's not anymore because I, I'm talking back when your pit stops were 20 mm-hmm. seconds. Mm-hmm. You know, you saw that's yeah. when yeah. And now you're down to 7 to 10 seconds. A 12-second pit stop is too Yeah, you're, is. You've lost a lot of time yeah, in yeah. pits. Um, a, a, and you yeah, don't a 14-second pit stop, somebody's getting five. You don't mm-hmm. see... As much in the pits no. as you used to, and the That's same true. way, if you'll watch the watch races, and you'll see those pit seats, mm-hmm. they're not full anymore. No, they have a that's a hard seat to sell because you don't see very much. No, and before they actually put the the screens in, those seats sold. But again, I'm talking about when we had uh, um, t- 12, 12, a twelve second pit stop was fast. Yeah. Yeah, but because it is real. Go back and watch some of these races, and you'll see where like they jack up the car in the funniest way. They jack up a car. I mean, there's no air jacks that come underneath the car, and then all these guys are just walking around going hitting the tires. They're not changing the tires. Just hitting them. They're just putting fuel in it. Yeah. The driver gets out, and has a cup of coffee, and smokes a cigarette. You know, shit like that. <laughs> I'm Eat a sandwich. That, but, but yeah, but it's like you go yeah. back and watch some of the old old races. The drivers were getting out. Yeah. Because it took a long time to fuel up the car. But see, those seats are hard to sell. And like the paddock is a hard sell now, too. Because mm-hmm. of that. That's why they put that extra row up there so you can maybe get a little higher and get enough more of a vantage, True. More of a vantage point. True. True. But there's one lady that shows up in, uh, let's see, she's like, like in box 12 every year. And she she's ancient. And she has T-shirts every year and everybody in her group. It says, Mavis's. However many I've seen her sixty fifth yeah. five hundred. Yeah, no, I've, I've, or seen, or yeah. Yeah. no like I've, I've seen Mavis. I've seen Mavis. Yeah, in I her don't crew. think her name's Mavis, but, the, but Marilyn. Yeah. Marilyn, that's her yes, name. Yeah. Marilyn. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's like she's going up the stairs, and I stop the traffic, and I'm like, you got, we got to let her go. Yeah, because she's taking, she's and her family's like almost wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean she's but but she, they, they're wheelchairing her to the stand. Yeah, and then she makes the high. She's right. walking. And she gets up. But yeah. and that woman never leaves. She's oh. up there for the entire race. She, the whole I family around yeah. her is wearing those shirts. Like, That's fantastic. I don't, I don't, it might have been 60-some years that, that she's been there. But every year, she's back. And that That's whole amazing. group's with her. That's amazing. Now, it used to be like that for the entire stand. It did. And that was, you know, the, this was my 30th year, and I'm like, some of my fifth. You know, shit like that. Yeah. You know. But that group has died and again like I said we have lost this generation 
that, yeah, my kids still come. Generation X. That's the generation my, my we My kids lost. still come. My, my son's going to be 28 this year. He still comes, but guess what day he comes for? Carb day. Carb day. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's where, it. yeah, so so your son, so we're 33, so we're in, like, the same generation, technically, that he is. And it's yeah. like, my older siblings, you know, they're late 40s and early 50s. And it's like, the Generation X crew, they're intermittent. And I feel like it's, you know, they're the group, whether they didn't, but nobody's really marketing towards them at this point. But but our generation, this, like, you know, below, we're, we're not Generation X, but we're not necessarily Millennials. Right. We're in this in-between kind of place. Very weird. Um, I feel See, I'm like, classified as a baby, but baby boomer. And what year were you born? 60. Which is... I'm right at the edge of that. Right yeah, at the, you're right, right, at, the, right, right at the end. Right at the end of Yeah. But... Because, I, I yeah, my, um, my older sister was born in 66. Yeah. So... You know, and she's technically a Generation Xer, but is she really a Generation Xer? Like, not right. really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but it's like our age group. I appreciate that they have been trying to draw them in with Carb Day and things like that, and I hope that that does pan out and that it spreads to other things. But what, what gets me is these young kids that come in now, and I, I, I shouldn't say young kids, but I, that's used to use that genre, <clears throat> and they'll come in the main gate, which is you know. The, the new main gate. Right. And they'll walk right up to us and they'll go, where is the, uh, where's the party at? Where's the DJ? And for the, the pit party, not the pit party. Snake, but the snake, snake, snake yeah. pit party. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, you, you got to do this. And you got to go all the way around. Then you got to go, go under the, the tunnel the and then you got to turn and again. And then you'll go and then you'll see it way over there. And they're like, wow. It's a pretty big track. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, no yeah, shit. But they're there just for the snake pit. Yeah. Which, they're not there to watch the 500. You've got yeah. Mary Pat and Joe here. You got neighbors? No, mm-hmm. it's um, Family. my godmother and um, and her son, one of my one of my good friends. Oh, okay. He's up okay. from Florida. So, okay. but, uh, but, but yeah, but it's interesting. I will it, say it, with our seats, even though we don't have like that generational thing that like there is still that friendliness, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, because we make friends with everybody around us every year, even right. though it's, I, I would love it if it was, a, if it was the same people, yeah. right. but it's not. And no. so we just, we kind of, I mean, I grew up, you know, when I, when we went in Southwest Vista, it was the same people every year. And right. I would say there was one guy that was in the very right. front row of Southwest Vista and he'd been there. I mean, he's probably dead by now. That's how old he was when right. I saw him. And when they would play Stars and Stripes Forever, yeah. the good old John Phillips Sousa, da na 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 da na na he would, tracks this way, he would turn around, face the stands, <laughs> like he and was a, everybody, yeah, 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 and he yeah. would direct the entire thing. Da, right. da, 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 right. da, da. And he would cue every section and do this whole production and like that was part of the allure of that section is that everybody knew this guy was going to stand up and direct stars and stripes forever every year and Mm -hmm. um and so you know i expected that no matter where we went but it it has changed some yes so we're even even the pre-race has changed the bands come but it's not the same because people used to flock in for the parade of bands yeah Yeah. so it started at 8 a.m yes the stands would be half full Yeah. yeah Because people wanted to see these bands. And, and, and now these bands, they don't... I mean, they, they I don't, don't play for I, anybody. I don't even know if they even walk around the entire Oval anymore. No, they still do, but, but it's... they don't play... Probably. I mean, by the time they're... I mean, the, they, only they, time they, they, the only reason they walk they, around the whole Oval is that it'd be too much of a CF to have them stop anywhere else. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, it's not because it's the best thing. It's just because it'd be a, a cluster I mean, to they have just... Them, yeah. stop, a, lot of time, a lot of the bands anymore, when they used to play... When they're walking past and they just, they just and now they're just the drummers are the only thing. Going yeah, in that case, that's it. There, there's yeah. no music coming out. Of I it. mean, which I will say, having been in marching mm-hmm. band, it's it's a motherfucker to march on that track sure. and play at the oh, same I mean, time. Oh, I don't doubt that. One it bit. is a motherfucker. I mean, it doesn't look like it's banked. Until you until walk you get on, out there on it, yeah. On it. I remember my first mini marathon. I was right. like, "This would be great." I hit that, and I went, "Oh god!" Well, yeah, they don't even let you get out on the track. No, I mean, now you're in the pit lane. It used to be yeah. you could get up a little right. bit, but now you're, you're like, in the pit "Oh god, I, this was a bad idea." This is nine degrees. Wait till you go to Daytona. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, when we go pre-race, when they bring out the cars, it's 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 like the five hundred. Oh. Because it's it's the first race of the year, and they bring yeah. in a marching band. Oh, cool! Oh, I'm and so the, excited. the car, yeah, you'll get kind of goosebumps because it's cool because here comes the American flag, and the, and yeah. then they'll, they'll bring out all the flags from all these different countries. Oh, yeah. Because every driver has, if they're from a different mm-hmm. country, they bring a flag out for each. Sure. One. And so they're out here marching. Yeah. In in front of the cars, as the cars are being pushed out on the grid, 
yeah. and we're down there in that, and then you can hang out in the grass. Oh, okay. And in, in the grassy area. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then we always go up into the stands to watch the first half hour, 45 yeah. minutes or yeah. whatever. It's kind of a tradition that we started. I think And so. go up as high as we can. Yeah. yeah. A different no, perspective, you have to, right? yeah. And to walk up that track, it's... It's, it's hardcore? The, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty crazy. Right. The, the, yeah. they, the Daytona event is it's fun. Okay. You will, you both I, cannot wait. You, I'm pretty sure oh, you'll have a good time. Oh, I think it's going to be. On Friday night, it's a party. Awesome. And it, one, the one group that we end up partying with, they're called East Coast. Um, East Coast uh, Sports Car Group or something oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah. And they're from all over the East Coast. But we end up partying with them. They have a game called Battle Shots. Mm. Oh. oh, I'm familiar with Battle Shots. Right. Just like Battleship. But with except shots. Except with shots. Oh, God. Yeah. And you miss. You got to take, you you take a shot, stuff like that. Oh, God. I and can't wait. we, yeah, we've been playing that for, that, that, that's the guy that I met, with, had the shirt when I had the yeah, shirt Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. And the yeah. camera guy. Yeah. And so we nice. started partying with them two years ago. And then they, yeah, they've got the battle Oh, yeah. Shots. We got some people really, I mean, we end up running out of alcohol and people are going back to their campsite getting more alcohol. <laughs> and, and I'm running around this year with a megaphone. I had to make somebody had a megaphone and I borrowed it for like two hours. Oh, yeah. Trying to get new contestants to play battle shots. Battle shots, battle shots, come play battle let, shots. Let me just add megaphone to our, our running. There you list go. You know what? We went to Bath Bid Bath and Beyond last night. Yeah. Ten dollars. Oh, and you got them coupons. For a big megaphone. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. I mean okay. a good size one, about a good yeah. Yeah, a foot long, and it was like, wow. A megaphone, it yeah. And then on a Saturday night, it's during the... We always go right before the fireworks shoot off at 10 o'clock. Go over to the International Horseshoe. Okay. And that's where they do that that 180. Oh, right yeah, yeah, Slow way down, and then the fire... And then they're doing... You see the brake uh, rotors uh, glowing red when they could brake real hard right oh, in wow. there. And then the fireworks mm-hmm. are right behind it. That's amazing. I put that on Twitter the other day. Yeah, yeah. That. We, every year we go to that spot. Yeah. And it's, it's asshole to elbow crowded. Oh, oh, I'm sure. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. So the best way to do it, if you got the access to it, bring a small step ladder. Oh, I do because that's what we, we got ladders. I was that's saying, what I, we got ladders for days. <laughs> that's what my buddy Joe does. It's the the photographer dude. Oh, that's he, he has a step ladder. Yeah. He, he puts his little step ladder up and he gets up. Let's say I'm in short, so I have to have something in my house. There you go. Ta-da! Bring yep. a step I've ladder. got like a two step step ladder. Yep. You know, you could, you could bring something like that. So that's awesome. But I mean, it's that is a really. I mean, that's what. I get psyched for this. Yeah. And now May is kind of, not that I'm going to ever give up on the 500, but, because I always look forward to the month of May. Right. Yeah. Well, now I got this to look forward to. Yeah. Well, and you don't have to work this, and so it's a different. Right. It's, it's a different love. Right. Yeah. It's a different love. It's, it's not that you're not excited for the 500, but. Oh, no, no. Oh, but this weird. is purely a play weekend for you. Uh, definitely. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, all right. Um, well. Favorite is, driver. Yeah. Everybody. Least, Least favorite, favorite driver. driver. Past? Mario, Any, anytime. Mario Any. Andretti. That's yeah. Because I always thought, and Michael. You and my dad. And, and now, Marco. And now, Marco. Yeah. Now, when we went to Pocono this year, they had <laughs> the podcast for the, the mayors on air. Yeah, Hinch. Okay, the Hinch thing. And um, they had it at the Payne Tour yeah. facility. That's yeah, yeah. They do that every year. And those guys, by the way, are pretty cool. I don't know yeah, if you follow the page. We're following people. them. There, we're we're talking. Okay, they, on Twitter, those guys are really fun. Awesome. They came up last this year at Pocono and said, "You're Indy 500 pirate." <laughs> I said, "You think?" Yes, I, yes, I am. And yeah. they were like, "Yeah, we we've seen your we've seen these flags before at the Speedway." Yeah. on Twitter and stuff. I'm like, okay. So they're like, "Come over here tonight because we're having the mayor on air." Yeah, and they had Marco oh, at the God. mayor on air. With Hinchcliffe and, <laughs> and who was the other one? There was three of them. Probably. Oh. It wasn't New Garden. Rossi. Will. Wasn't it Will? Will Power. You're right. It, it was, was Will. Will Power. Uh, and Power. Beep, 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 beep. Can, Power can be funny. <laughs> he can be. He, he can, can be, funny. be funny. But obviously Hinchcliffe is hilarious. Oh. Yeah. But obviously. he's a character. Marco. They were trying to get him to. We were talking. Okay, that is real. Pocono is near Nazareth. Yeah. So we. People that camped beside of us were from that Nazareth area. Like, they're his and neighbors. And they knew him. Yeah. And they said, the biggest thing with him is he has no self-confidence, is what they said. Shocker. 
I, I'm actually not surprised by that. No. Now, I'm if he'd have won, I've read stories about this. Now, if he'd have won the first 500 that he was in when he got passed by Morris mm-hmm. at the end, yeah, I think it would have changed. How much his mm-hmm. career would be different? Oh, it'd be so that's, much different. That's a fair, because now you're an Indy 500 winner as yeah. a rookie, just like Rossi. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, the difference between first and second place in Indy 500. I mean, it's it literally it's a career change. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't want to dislike Marco, but he's an Andretti. And it's I don't so want to see. I, I so want to easy. see that curse never broken. Yeah, yeah. It's just real easy to hate him. Really yeah. easy. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and he he doesn't make it any harder to hate him. I mean, I, I, so many years I'm standing in in East Ham watching this race, and it's Marco, or not Marco. It's Michael and Mario. Mm-hmm. They're one two, one two. They're 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 they they've got the class act. Back when they had those Kmart cars. Yep. You know, they were white car, number one and number two. Yep. And they're just class act. They're leading the field. But they can't pull it off. They can't close. And and, and I'm like, they can't. Okay, guys, you got to lap, you lap the field. There's this thing called let off that accelerator a little bit. Maybe your car might make it. (laughs) But those guys were so balls to the wall. Yeah. That's all they knew. And then I read one year where uh, Mario is leading going into lap, lap, like lap 190. He's, and, and I remember this. And like a little bit, he, his turbo quit, I think, of what it was. And if he would have jumped, jumped, jumped down, down, down to fourth gear, he could have been mm-hmm. it was. Mm-hmm. And for cruising, if he would have just bumped it back. back, pulled it back. He'd have been fine. The, the motor would have lasted. But so within that 10 lap period, he's done. Well, yeah. and to me, I will, I will, I'll just say that, that to me says that you're just not that familiar with machines because, so my dad um, <clears throat> was a mechanic to like put himself through college and all that business. And so like I grew up working on cars and all that business and we always take a house, we, we take a houseboat trip every year. And so like I learned how to drive a boat from him. And his thing was, you know, whenever you drive a boat, like you, I mean, throttle, it's, you know, mm-hmm. same as gas pedal. You know, he's like, okay, run your engine at 80%. Don't run your engine at 100%. Right. Mm-hmm. Same as you don't run your, your, your furnace. You don't put it to 95 degrees and leave it on for five minutes and then turn it off. You run it at a lesser percentage right. because that maximizes the life of it. Right. Mm-hmm. But <coughs> I, I saw the Andretti's lead so many laps. Yeah. And they couldn't pull it off. And now I'm like, I don't ever want to see an Andretti ever win. I, I didn't even when Marco or when Michael was driving yeah. still. And yeah. when he came back and drove a few years again, I was like, oh, hell no. I do not want to see him win this race. And then Marco, uh, there's like lap 199 and Marco's leading and it goes past me and I'm like, oh my God. The crowd's cheering. The crowd is really cheering. Yeah, and you're like, and ah. I'm like, oh my God, that curse is going to be lifted and it's no. going to be this spoiled little shit who's going to win this race. <laughs> And then Horish just comes out of a shotgun and passes. Says, him. Not today, Junior. Oh yeah, where he came up with that extra horsepower? Yeah, but the curse. I, I never liked Michael for the fact is I always could, okay. I put him same time frame as Al Junior, mm-hmm. right? To me, the answers were hardworking people. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because even though Mario drove sprint cars and stock cars. And at the 24 hours of uh, Le Mans and sure, stuff like sure. that. I, I don't know. There was always something about him I didn't like. So I didn't like Michael. And you look at Al Jr.'s wife, and she's got a fire suit on. To me, that's it's, that's a working man. Yeah. I don't really have a favorite driver because they're all doing something that I would fucking love to sure, do. Sure, I get that. So I can't say I really dislike Marco. I can't say I really love Hinchcliffe, but I do. He's fucking cool. Oh, I mean, so funny. You've met him. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he come out of his motorhome this year at Mid Ohio because we had Chucky with us, the handicapped man, yeah. the older guy, <clears throat> and come out in his socks. Oh my god! And to talk to us. He's yeah. He's he's a good. He's a great ambassador. And, and I saw him. At, I mean, he's very much for the people. Saw like, him at Daytona. Yeah. In the pre race in the pit lane. In the garage area, and I walk. He he's, walks by me. Nice shirt. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got the fucking yeah, yeah. shirt on, and he's like, hey. <laughs> "Nice shirt, dude." 
<laughs> so when I saw so him at Mid Ohio, I'm like, hey, you're probably not going to remember. He goes, no, I remember the shirt. <laughs> I had that shirt on at Mid Ohio, too. Fuck you, we're from Indianapolis. Yeah. Uh, I got to kind of watch where I wear it because some crowds <coughs> don't appreciate might it. not appreciate it. At Daytona now, it's it's everybody knows. Oh, there's a guy from there's the guys from Indianapolis. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We might have to so, get our shirts a little sooner. We then. might have to get we our. Oh, yeah, you might want to think yeah. about. We're from Indy, or yeah, because I've got some new T-shirts. So I was thinking about getting something printed on them. It has like the Indiana flag on it. It was like, yeah, yeah, we're badasses. We're from Indiana or something. Yeah, like that. I mean, I'm all so, about that. Yeah. But you, you might want to get think about getting something printed up yeah, for race day, so you'll yeah, be. We definitely should. Yeah, so yeah. we'll be ready to go. Yeah, we gotta we gotta dress with our crew. Right, yeah. and the problem is then, make sure you get it big because you might have to have a shirt on mm-hmm. underneath. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. That's what I have to do every year. Is like so a you, tank top layer like this. Yeah, yeah layer it. <laughs> yeah. So all right. Well, thank you so much for Not talking problem. to us. This has been fantastic.